Okay, let's see if we can do a one day build. Today the idea is to turn this, oh, wrong lens, hang on. Okay, now you can see the whole board. This is a dining table. I picked it up off the street a year or more ago. It's almost seven feet tall, 38 inches wide. It's been sitting in my garage since then as I've been trying to figure out what I wanted it for. Um, and I just haven't had a project that came in mind. I've used it on a few other things as a temporary table, but anyways, um, in our home office, we all of a sudden came up with a, we wanted to do a bit of quick rearranging and I needed a new little table for holding some printers. And I decided that, you know, I wanted this done like yesterday. So I wanted to do quick. So I'm starting with that and I'm gonna cut it down. So it's kind of a make it up as you go project, kind of. I mean, I did spend a couple hours in SketchUp and I've got this basic design. Tried a few different things and this is basically like the TV media cabinet I did almost five years ago. I'll throw up a photo of what that looked like. So I got a top where I can put our scanner, inkjet printer, and I've got a big opening where I can fit our laser printer and then I just have a drawer at the bottom. Real simple little table, you know, 24 inches tall, 25 inches wide, about 18, 16, 18 inches deep. Um, it is a little bit past 2.30 on Saturday afternoon. Let's see how far we get today. Now this beast is too big for me to manhandle over the table saw, so I'm going to cut it into chunks more manageable using just my circular saw and this guide. So I've got it all roughly broken down and as I was manhandling it around it really really drove home how heavy this table was and um, these pieces are about an inch and an eighth inch and a sixteenth thick and um, I really want to get that down closer to three quarters mostly because I just want to get the weight down but also that'll be a good excuse to get the old finish off so I'm going to plane it all, which is going to complicate things because these are all fairly wide. My planer is 13 and a half inches, so like this is the top, the two shelves, the two sides. I'm going to basically, I'm going to rip them down the middle, get it all planed, and I'm going to glue them all back together. I'm going to try, I mean, these all have seams on them, so I'm going to try to just split the seams so I'm not adding more seams. So then there was a whole bunch of planing, and I skipped most of that because it's boring. But also, uh, my daughter was helping me, and I don't really want them on camera. Yeah, yeah. And then it's time to mulch the garden. It's ash, all right. So I had these nice big panels, and I had to cut them into pieces, and I planed them down, and they're much thinner now. Now I need to put them back together. When I put them back together, they're going to be too big for the planer again, so I really want them to just be perfectly aligned. So in that sort of situation, um, I will pop in a couple of dowels with my dowel jig that make sure they line up perfectly when I glue them back together. Now before I cut them up, I wrote on the end, you know, shelf A, and then I, I put a mark where I cut them apart so that I can put the two pieces back together that were together originally. And the result is a smooth joint that is virtually flawless. So the pieces were all glued a bit oversized, so I'm now gonna take them down to the final dimensions. The top's gonna be 25 by 18. 
The shelves and the sides are all going to be 16 inches front to back, and then I'll cross cut them later to length. So I'm about to cross cut the shelf above the drawer, the shelf below the drawer, and these two cross pieces that go underneath the top, and then this last cross piece at the bottom. These all need to be the same. I've got that at 19 and a half inches, and so I'm setting a stop block on my large cross cut sled here. It's important to do these all at once because it doesn't matter if it's, you know, a 16th or, or a 32nd or whatever, less than 19 and a half or, or above 19 and a half. What really matters is that they all have to be the same. So you want to cut them all at the same time with the same settings so they're all going to be identical. This is one of the side panels and I've struck a line here at two and a quarter and then at eight and a quarter marking where I'm going to have my uh, dividers. Now my pieces are not exactly three quarters of an inch thick so you know I, I was looking at my plans but then I actually put the piece here and measured the five inch gap that I wanted and that's how I came up with that. And I don't want a solid bottom I want some legs so again I, I measured in two and a quarter inches then I've set my combination square to two inches and I'm just going to draw a rough line here, take a paint can to come up with the curve that I want. That looks pretty good. Now I'll do the same on the next piece. So this is a quick build, a simple build, looking for a basic piece of office furniture. So I'm going with, you know, trusty pocket holes. Uh, they're quick, they're strong, they're, they, they work great. Um, that said, you know, I'm still building it in such a way that you should never see them. This is the bottom shelf and all the pocket holes are on the back side. I've got a 90 degree clamp here to hold it in place. Uh, you really want one of these pocket hole clamps to help you with clamping. And yeah, I just need to put a little glue and I've got lines marking where I'm going to be going. It's almost tricky getting the two parts together. It's probably going to be a bit of wiggling, depending on how perfectly perpendicular everything is. Especially these little ones here, because these are not going to stand perfectly straight. But... Yeah, I don't have a lot of temp time to pay attention to the camera right now. It's got everything in the right. Oh, that's not right. Wasn't quite on the pencil line for that first one. So one thing to keep in mind if you're putting two narrow shelves together is that you got to be able to fit the drill in there and I completely forgot. It just so happens that the five inches I gave is just enough. I've done it before where I was like trying to fit three inches shelves apart and it was like not really easily. And last night, last thing I did is I added this bottom plate. It'll help square things up, but most importantly, it's to keep things from rolling under it on the floor. So we pretty much have a cabinet and a top. This is a good stopping point if you wanted to, a nice open shelf, but I'm going to build a drawer to go in here next. Drawers are typically made of half inch stock. 
Um, I happen to have some scrap three quarter inch cabinet plywood lying around, so that's what I'm using. Just so my drawers are just gonna be a little bit beefier. This is actually nice because I'm planning to go with uh, pocket holes for my drawer assembly. And um, you can do pocket holes in skinnier half inch plywood. Uh, you need uh, skinnier screws. And um, I'm not sure if you needed the uh, modification to the jig, but since I'm using three quarter stock, I don't have to worry about that. I've ripped them down to fit. This is five and a sixteenth or something like that. Um, just take measurements and I snuck up on it and it's not quite an eighth of an inch shorter so that the boards slide, sl slide in there nicely. So next I'm going to take these to the table saw and I will run a dado on here um, to fit the plywood bottom. With pocket holes with drawers, you put the pocket holes on the front and on the back and then from the inside of the drawer, they're never seen. So I cut a sheet of plywood that fits in here and I'm going to put some glue in the track. I didn't show you, but I already hand sanded this with 150. You want to get your sanding done before. And in. If you cut the bottom square, that should force the drawer into square if it's not already there. But check anyways, and this looks pretty good. Add a few screws along the back. I read it a chamfer on the front face of the drawer front and then I sanded it and now I've measured carefully and I've clamped it so I can attach it. This is the handle I've chosen and like most handles it comes with its own set of screws but these are way too short for my drawer because I've got three quarter inch and then thick stock so I've just I have uh, lo extra long screws. I bought a whole pack ages ago because I'm, I'm frequently working with thicker stock. So you might need to get longer screws to go with your hardware. If you're doing a whole bunch of drawers, you're gonna want a jig for drilling out these holes, but I'm only doing one, so. There we go. Can take the drawer most of the way out before you have to worry about it and this will be a seldom used drawer so Here we go time for finishing i'm going to be using an ebony stain on the base of the unit so it'll be black but still the grain should show through but i'm going to leave the top and the drawer interior is going to be just clear so it'll have a nice dark base clear top. I've used that on a few other projects. I think it looks really nice and it will suit the decor in our office. So it's now a couple of days later. I put about four coats of finish on the top, put about three coats of finish on the drawer front and on the cabinet, and I can put the uh, hardware back on, and then I can get the top mounted on the cabinet. I positioned the cabinet one inch from the front and about two inches in on the side. 
and I'm going to be fastening it with screws. And I drilled these holes and I wiggled the drill to make them elongated so that there's a little bit of allowance for wood movement. Okay, there you go. There's my quick little furniture build of a printer stand. And for those keeping track at home, it's it's now Thursday morning for my one day build. Now to be fair, I did nothing yesterday. I was just letting the finish cure. So Tuesday noonish was probably the last time I put a little bit of finish on. I got a large part of the build done on Saturday and that's because I got to start with that huge kitchen table for all the wood. And, uh, but it, it was mostly complete on by, by Sunday evening. So two day build plus three days of finishing. Okay, that's about it for this one. As always, I'd like to thank you for stopping by and spending some time in the shop. If you feel I've earned it, please consider subscribing. I'm gonna close now with some pictures of this installed up in the office, and we'll see you next time.